Hi everyone, I'm Kylie and welcome to Theme Parks for Grown Ups. I am shooting on site as they say. I am at the Yacht and Beach Club in Disney World near Epcot. And no, I'm not staying here. I'm not cool enough for that. I'm actually just staying at the um, Disney World uh, All Star Sports. That's what I'm doing. Well, that's what I did last week. If you don't know about that yet, I'm doing a month long in Disney World and I'm photographing and um, vlogging uh, my daily adventures and such. And if you want to see why I'm doing this or you know the reason behind me staying here at Disney World for four weeks I'll put the link in the description below for the other video um, that explains all that and how much everything is going to cost and budgeting and financial plans and all that um, if you're interested in doing something crazy like that but what today is all about is I'm going to give you my personal four-day itinerary for a Disney World vacation we just did four days with um, my best friend or I did I did four days with my best friend and I wanted to give a lowdown to everything we got to do. Um, this was definitely the more vacation part of my uh, working vacation because we did all four parks and we did um, all the attractions that we wanted to see. So let me explain to you everything we got done and what I would do for a four day itinerary at Disney World. Now my plans may be completely different from yours. Um, you may be screaming at the screen being like why the heck did you fast pass that when you could have done the other thing. Um, these are all my preferences and what I like to do uh, it works out for me and if you like to do something else obviously that's totally your prerogative. If you have more suggestions, I'm open to them. I'm always open to hearing suggestions about what you should do on your um, itinerary for your Disney World vacation. Okay, so the first day we did Epcot, uh, reason being is that we had extra magic hours for that first day since we were staying at an on-site resort. Um, the extra magic hours we actually didn't end up using because we were just so exhausted from the flight before. Like I got maybe three or four hours of sleep the night before, so we didn't end up using those. But it was fine. Um, we got a full day in and it was super fun. Um, for us, what I like to do is start off and um, rope drop test track. We were there a little bit late, so the wait was a little bit longer than what it should have been. If you really want to go hard, um, I would get there at least 30 minutes before the park opens, um, just in case you the line grows and then you can't really, um, then you're not waiting in line for as long. So we rope drop test track and then we went over to Soren and did that as well because the line wasn't too bad for that one. And this is all depending on what your fast passes are, the things that you grabbed. Um, my fast pass passes for the day, the one that we chose for the first tier was Frozen. The reason why I choose Frozen is because I don't like to wait in line for Frozen. Um, it's a good ride and it's cute and everything, but it's not to me worth a long wait. So I like to fast that pass that one if that's available. If not available, then your second choice would probably should be um, Test Track and the third would be Soren at that point. Um, and that's tier one. Tier two, any of them are fine, uh, but I would say try for Spaceship Earth first. Uh, so we have a spaceship Earth and we had a Frozen that day and then we had a Finding Nemo and Friends which we didn't even end up using. So we went and did Soren, and after that, uh, since we had already done some things, we went to uh, we went over to World Showcase. Normally, I would say that you would go over to like Spaceship Earth if you don't have a fast pass for it. Since we had one, we didn't need to necessarily do that. So we went over to World Sh Showcase, and we had breakfast at Les Halles, Les 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 Halles Boulangerie Patisserie, um, <laughs> the cafe that's over in France. We had breakfast over there. Uh, just so you know, it opens earlier than the rest of World Showcase. World Showcase case opens at 11 but that bakery opens earlier so you can get your coffee and you can get pastries and you can get like breakfast things like there's all sorts of stuff over there I highly recommend you're starting your day over there because it is super yummy it's my favorite restaurant and then we went and did our spaceship earth fast pass at that point so that was in the morning so we went and did that and then after that we went back and did the rest of future world and so what that included was finding Nemo living with the land um, journey into the imagination. Uh, we didn't do Mission Space because I get super, super motion sickness and I hate that ride. Um, I think it's cool for people who don't have motion sickness, but for me, I get super sick. Like even riding the back of a car, I get sick. So I do not recommend it. If you get motion sickness, do not do that to yourself. Um, so after that, we did that. And then we went over to World Showcase. And we started hitting up um, all the different pavilions over there. And we took our time. Uh, there was no rush into it. I don't like to rush and I don't like to run from thing to thing or try to ride as many things as I want to. I just kind of do everything once. Um, so we were pr 
pretty chill about it. So we started in Canada and worked our way around. We were at the Festival of Arts um, that's still going on for like another week or so. So we were able to see some of the exhibits there. Uh, they had some paints on, paintings on display and some artists there. So we got to see a little bit of that. We had a couple of snacks, but not too much. We really didn't do too much uh, for the Festival of the Arts. It's not quite as um, not quite as much going on as like Food and Wine Festival. It's a very cool festival, though. It's probably one of my favorites because of the Broadway scene and everything, which we did end up seeing uh, the Disney on Broadway performances later that night. So, like I said, we just kind of worked our way around, and that took you know maybe two or three hours. There are four shows in Epcot, and so you might want to see them if you're just in the neighborhood. Uh, they play every so often. So like the in uh, Canada, there's the O Canada uh, show. So it was basically a movie about Canada, starring Martin Short, and um, that's basically all of them, all of the little movies that are happening in Epcot. Uh, there's that one, and there's the one in France. Uh, and then there's the American Adventure, and then Reflections of China. And the only other ride besides Frozen is the Le Grand Fiesta starring the three caballeros, the big party starring the three caballeros. That's a little boat ride, and uh, the line is usually very, very low, unless it's a super busy day. So uh, once you make it to Mexico, just go on that ride. You don't even have to really pan plan for it, just go for it. Uh, we decided to stop and have some tequila shots and some margaritas, and then we went on that ride, and it was such a blast, um, especially on a couple of shots of tequila. We had a good time. It was a relatively low crowd day for Epcot, so that was good. And the next day in Magic Kingdom it was too. Uh, as the week progressed, it got very busy. So of course, the last thing that we did was go over to Illumination. There's Watch Illuminations. We got there pretty early just to sit down because we were just so tired. So we waited like 40 minutes until Illuminations. Generally, you can just kind of walk up and watch it though, unless you don't want to be in obstructed views in any way. Um, I'm fine with standing behind people. This one we just wanted to sit on the ground for a bit, so we just sat there for about 40 minutes until Illuminations happened. And then we headed out right after that. Uh, we could have stayed for extra magic hours, but like I said, we were just way too tired. It just And we had an early day at Magic Kingdom the next day, so that was our day at Epcot. So the next day was Magic Kingdom, so that's day two. Again, that was only purely because of extra magic hours, and we actually did end up using those in the evening. So we went to Magic Kingdom and we started our day off with breakfast at Be Our Guest. I had only done dinner at Be Our Guest when it first opened, like a few years ago, and I hadn't tried breakfast yet, so we wanted to try it. And especially it's kind of a nice, fun thing um, to get in there before the park opens to the rest of the public. So you get kind of some fun shots uh, without a whole lot of people in the background of like uh, the back of the castle. They let everybody in to the front of the castle and through Main Street before the park officially opens. And, and then after that they released everyone to the rest of the park. So it was kind of fun to just kind of walk around a little bit and see uh, the park before it opened to everybody. So uh, we did that, it was at 9 a.m. So it wasn't that, or we weren't that much earlier than everyone else, but we still got a couple of cool pictures. And then we went to breakfast over there. My honest review for Be Our Guest Breakfast is like, meh, you're paying for the atmosphere there. So like, it's kind of a cool, atmosphere and it's a very fun environment and I recommend it because just purely because of that but as far as like the food goes like don't go expecting anything like delicious or lovely or wonderful there are a lot better places for that sort of thing but as far as like a cool experience yeah uh, be our guest is super fun we immediately went over to Seven Dwarfs and that's what we did and the line had already like built up quite a bit by then so we decided not to do Seven Dwarfs at that time and just wait till later. Uh, I recommend rope dropping and then going directly to Seven Dwarfs in the morning and seeing what the wait time is, especially like get there early, get there 40 minutes before Magic Kingdom opens so that you can hop right in line without waiting um, you know an hour to two hours later. It's just uh, probably something you should do but since we had a 9 a.m. reservation we got at 9 45 and uh, Seven Dwarfs was already a long long wait so we were like eh, well it's fine we'll either go on it or we won't like we were pretty chill about it we I usually don't like um, 
get too upset if I miss a ride and the person I was with wasn't really upset. He was just happy to be there. So if we missed it, it was fine. And if we got on it, that's fine too. It's usually the attitude you should probably go into it. Like just know that your plans will probably change and um, you might not see everything that you want to. So just kind of be able to let those things go. So anyway, we went right over to um, Space Mountain and did that one. It was super low weight, 10 minutes or something like that. It was also really rainy and terrible all day long, but that was great for crowds because nobody was really there. I mean, the crowds were pretty low. So we went to Space Mountain and then we did all of Tomorrowland in one fell swoop. That means uh, we did Space Mountain, Carousel of Progress, to, uh, People Mover, uh, then the Laugh Floor. Normally I would say go over and do like Big Thunder Mountain and uh, Pirates and Haunted Mansion, things like that, the big key attractions uh, if you want to. But again, we were kind of taking a chill, so we did all of Tomorrowland and then we head over and we did uh, Big Thunder Mountain and then Splash Mountain. Then we did Pirates and Tiki Room and we skipped Jungle Cruise that day. Uh, we just didn't want to go, it was just cold. We just wanted to be inside basically. So after the three o'clock parade, you'll either want to do like lunch or uh, maybe take a break and go back to the hotel. We decided to opt for going back to, well, going to the Grand Floridian and check out Meisner's Lounge and grab a drink from there. And that was an excellent choice because it was getting super cold at that point and we just needed a place uh, to be and to rest and their drinks were so strong, it was awesome. Then we came back and then we did everything else we wanted to do. So like Little Mermaid and the teacups and Winnie the Pooh, uh, we rode a Space Mountain again. And then after we had ridden everything that we wanted to, we went and uh, we watched Happily Ever After, the fireworks. We got a good spot for that and watched that as well. And then we finished off the night with uh, Seven Dwarves and doing Space Mountain one more time. And that was our day at Magic Kingdom. So next day at Hollywood Studios, I advise rope dropping Slinky Dog. Uh, obviously, that's the most popular ride at Hollywood Studios. So getting to the park again, like 40 to 60 minutes before the park opens, so they can let you in and then you can get in line. Okay, change of scenery. Uh, I was apparently in the smoking section of the Beach Club Resort, and there was lots of people over there, and I was interrupting their little breaks from reality. So I decided to find a place else to be that might be a little more quiet and I found this beautiful little wedding pavilion little wedding gazebo uh, over on the yacht side of Yacht and Beach Club and it has a view of the ocean in the back well, the lake in the back you probably can't see it because it's probably overexposed but um, this is where I am now on Hollywood Studios day three so we just went to Slinky Dog and then uh, did Midway Mania right after that uh, Alien with Swirling Saucers was too long of a wait, so we decided to come back. Actually, I had a fast pass for that one. Um, I managed to get that one, but not Slinky Dog or anything else. So that's what we did with that one. And after that, we went and got some breakfast. There's not too many breakfast places in Hollywood Studios. It's kind of one of the things that is lacking the most is like places to get um, early in the morning uh, after you've rope dropped everything. It's hard to find things. So. Um, we went over to uh, the Joffrey's Coffee over by Terror, Tower of Terror because we were going to go on that one right after that. So we went and got some coffee and some donuts from Joffrey's Cof Coffee. The other place you could go to is Starbucks. That one's open early and also uh, Woody's Lunchbox. They have a couple things that you can get for breakfast like the, like the Pop-Tart thing is available at that time. Everything available is available on that menu in the morning as well. So we went on Tower of Terror. We had a fast pass for um, for Rock and Roller Coaster, but ended up doing the Single Riders line instead because we had a reservation that was going to overlap. We didn't want to rush it or anything, so we just did Single Riders, and it wasn't a big deal. Uh, so we got on that one really quick, and then we decided to get some drinks and then go to Frozen Sing Along. And I've actually never been to Frozen Sing Along, but it was actually super fun. And um, it was a blast, but obviously there's a lot of little ones in there and you might want to bring a friend or someone with you if you want to go on that because it's a little weird doing it by yourself. After Frozen Ever After, we went and saw Beauty and the Beast. Um, and at that point, we we're just kind of doing some shows. And so we went and saw Beauty and the Beast and that was good. That's also a good show. I highly recommend it. Uh, Disney has a good, does a good job of hiring like um, professional level actors and musical theater artists in their parks so you're never getting low quality actors or performances at all they're all very highly trained and very good so uh, Beauty and the Beast was after that and then we went over and popped over to Journey to the Little Mermaid these these are the sort of things that you can do when um, like wait times are super high for the other rides
rides and then we went over to Star Tours and Muppets and then we did Indiana Jones and so at that point we were super tired and we were ready for our reservation but we still had to wait a couple more hours so uh, we just kind of killed some time around the park and wandered around and drank some more <laughs> we went to uh, the tap house the baseline tap house which is a newer um, tap house in Hollywood Studios so they have some like small bites and um, cocktails on tap as well as some beers craft brews that sort of thing uh, so that's what we did after that and then uh, we went and saw the new incredible section there's like a new little section of Hollywood Studios that they're just devoting to the Incredibles and so that's where you can get like the Jack Jack's cookie num num like it's just like a warm cookie it's a big warm chocolate chip cookie basically and there's some good Instagram walls over there so take some pictures with your friends like that's a fun place to kill some time and they have a new dance party with some Incredibles characters and also some like one-off interesting characters like there's like a newscaster there once it was all like retro -y, so that was super fun um so like enjoy the dance party um but the main reason we went there is because we wanted to meet edna mode because she's new and um we had a great time meeting her she was so funny and the cue for that like the line for edna, edna mode is like kind of cool like they have replicas of all of the uh, suits that were worn by the superheroes in the movies like they created these giant replicas of those uh, suits and there's like all this commentary by Edna Mode like on the plaques. It's like super funny It's just a super cute little line cue and then meeting Edna was a blast it was, She was actually the only character that we met on her vacation, but uh, she was fun I, I really enjoyed that. So after Edna Mode we went over to our dinner reservation, which was sci-fi dine-in dine theater uh, We were on the dining plan So we both ordered steaks like champions and then we got sangria and then we got martinis Again, it was just a day of drinking. I mean, like, Epcot is known for all of the alcohol, but uh, Hollywood Studio has quite a few cocktails that are actually super, super good. And then after sci-fi, it was ready for our uh, Fast Pass to Fantasmic. Interesting thing about the Fast Pass to Fantasmic, uh, it sets you, like, it guided us towards the left side of the amphitheater, um, but we got pretty much fair game for whatever row we wanted to be in. The fan, like the Phantasmic Fast Pass kind of just guarantees you seating. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get better spots sometimes, but you don't have to like wait in line for those good spots and uh, you just get escorted right wherever you need to be. So uh, we went very close. We were like third from the front and it was like a super fun experience to see Phantasmic that close up. It's our favorite show. It's my favorite live show in all of Disney, in all of Disneyland, every Disney park probably. Um, so yeah, that was our day at Hollywood Studios, day three. All right, day four was Animal Kingdom, and last but not least, this park really stresses me out just because of Flight of Passage. It is such a mess in the morning. It is so stressful to get to that ride every morning, but it is the best ride in all of Disney World, in my honest opinion. It is the coolest technology-wise. It is just super fun. It's beautiful. Everybody leaves with a smile on your face. Like, you have to go on this ride, but it's such a pain in the butt to go on. Um, obviously, if you're the lucky star who got a fast pass for that ride, more power to you. Go for it. Get on that fast pass. Don't worry about it thing. Um, get there early just to do Navi River Journey, but you don't have to be there that early. Uh, you don't have to run to any, you don't have to run to it basically. But if you don't have a fast pass for Flight of Passage, and then you, yeah, you gotta do some planning. So uh, we got there a little late actually. We were only there a half an hour before the park opened, only. <laughs> we were there a half an hour before the park opened. And so by that time, it was already a 60 minute wait. So I recommend getting there 40 to 60 minutes before the park opens. And so they start letting people in earlier, obviously. Uh, they release the, they let everyone in and basically they release everyone to go to the Avatar area. And that's where they start queuing up. They don't start boarding the ride until 9 a.m. or whenever the park actually opens, but they do let everyone in before the park opens. So get there early, get there as early as can. And once we got out, Navi River Journey had a long wait, so we just decided to skip it all together. Uh, obviously, if you really want to see it, it is a cool ride, it's a dark ride, and so either go right after Flight of Passage or just wait, and maybe the afternoon it might go down a bit, but for the most part, if it's a busy day, it's, it's going to be a long wait. After Flight of Passage, we decided again to get breakfast important meal of the day. So uh, we went over to my favorite little spot which is Kusafiri Bakery. Um, it's over in Africa near Kilimanjaro Safari. It's just this little uh, coffee place and they have iced lattes, mochas, and then uh, breakfast pastries and sandwiches. 
for breakfast that's a good place and also obviously uh, Creature Comforts which is the Starbucks there is another place for uh, quick service breakfast if you just want to grab something. So after that uh, I would advise going on Kilimanjaro Safari if the wait isn't too bad or if you don't have a fast pass and then uh, head over to Mount Everest. At that point uh, Mount Everest was a very low wait. I think it was 25 minutes and so we head over there and we did Mount Everest. We also had fast passes for it. We ended up going Mount Everest three times that day so it was super cool. Even though the wait times were insane sometimes like up to 95 minutes for Kilimanjaro. I don't know what happened. I think it was President's Day weekend maybe. Something happened where it was just a super super busy day even in February. It's just it's just what it is. Um, but it was fine. But I'm at Mount Everest and then we had again we had fast passes to Finding Nemo and that was at 11:30. and so we went over and did that at fast pass again just guarantees you some good saving and we got front row for that one on the left side and it was super fun I've like never seen Finding Nemo that close or that cool but like it was a super cool experience to see it that close just the puppetry and the scenery and the lighting and everything it's just it just makes it a fantastic experience then after that we did our some lunch I think at Restaurantosaurus uh, it's a good place for quick service it's just you know it's whatever quick service they have like chicken nuggets and whatever the best quick service I would say is probably flame tree but barbecue that's what everyone says and I would have to agree flame tree is pretty good so uh, we did some quick service there and then we went over to it's tough to be a bug obviously it was 10 minutes all day even though Kilimanjaro was an hour and a half at one point yeah, it's tough to be a bug was still hold strong at 10 minutes all day so you could just ride that one over and over if you want to after that we went and saw Lion King and we just kind of shoved our way in for standby for that one. Since there's only two of us, they could fit us in pretty quickly. We were there like five minutes before the show started and they found us a seat way in the back um, with some limited viewing, but not really. It was a good spot. Uh, you don't have to get there super early for Lion King unless you want a closer spot. Sometimes you get lucky and they put you like wherever they need to put you and that might be towards the front. I wouldn't stress out too much about getting too early to the shows, like you'll get in most of the time unless it's a super crazy, crazy busy day, um, you'll, 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 you'll be able to see the show no matter what. So Lion King was super fun, had a good time with that. At this point I would recommend taking a break and going to dinner someplace within the park. Yak and Yeti is everyone's favorite for table service and it's probably the best table service in Animal Kingdom. Uh, the other one, another good one is Tusker House and that's character dining with like Donald and Mickey and friends. Uh, in their safari gear and uh, yeah that's those are good table services for that one but what I would honestly recommend is to just leave the park and go to Animal Kingdom Lodge for dinner it's super fun if you have the time and the freedom to do so there's three well there's yes there's three restaurants on site on at the Animal Kingdom Lodge Resort the hotel that's um, near the park and that's like Jiko, Balma, and Sanaa. All three of them are fantastic. I love Jiko personally, but Sanaa is a crowd favorite among everyone else. I like the bread service is really good there and that sort of thing. So we skipped Rivers of Light and we went straight to Disney Springs because it was his last name in town. And we got some drinks at uh, the rooftop bar at the Coca-Cola store, which was fun. Um, they have uh, cocktails made with their Coke products. And so I got like this cherry Coke and coconut rum. It was super yummy. And then we went over to Ragland Road and we finished off the entire vacation there, which was super fun. Um, it's super loud and that's why I'm losing my voice because we were talking over Irish dancers all night. But uh, super cool entertainment and uh, Irish dancers and singers, a little folk band and really good food. Okay, that was my first week at Disney World and next week uh, we'll do some more exploring outside of the parks because we'll have a rental car, but for now that was it. I will do a review of All Star Sports in another video since that's the hotel that we stayed at and also a review for the next resort we're staying at which is World Champions and we'll see where we go from there. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure and I'll see you in the parks. Believe it in ghost stories. It's Captain Jack's. We're in one. <laughs>